Controlling devices over Wi-Fi is one of the easiest and most convenient ways to interact with electronics. You don't need extra wiring, buttons or separate controller, just a smartphone or laptop. Today I'll show you not only how to set up simple web server, but also how to configure a real-time communication and turn a web page into a progressive application. Let's start from simple example and improve it step by step. At first stage we are going to install ESP32 Async Web Server from libraries list and simply connect our controller to home Wi-Fi. At the top of the file I add the Wi-Fi credentials. Keep in mind that ESP cannot connect to 5 GHz network, so make sure you are using 2.4. In setup function I configure Wi-Fi mode as station and begin connection process. Once ESP connected to Wi-Fi, we'll get the IP address to be able to reach web page. Speaking about web server, I use default AT web port and set up dummy data. Let's upload code and check how it works. And if you have any errors related to Raspberry Pi, similar to what you see on the screen, make a full clean in project tasks and build project again. Once ESP connected to Wi-Fi, let's grab the IP address and paste into browser tab. It's nothing special yet. We'll add a fancy style later, but it works. However, I see two major issues in such approach. First of all, IP address is not stable and could be changed after rebooting the device. I assume that you won't plug in ESP to the computer every time to check whether IP changed or not. The second problem, Wi-Fi credentials are hard-coded. And while it's not a big deal for prototyping, you are locked within your network. If you want to sell your device or make someone the present, we need to do some improvements. You probably seen factory devices that serve a web page asking you to connect to Wi-Fi. We'll do the same by installing Wi-Fi Manager. Before diving in the code, I'll explain how it works. If device has stored Wi-Fi credentials in memory, it connects to the network automatically. If credentials are missing or incorrect, it starts a hotspot prompting you to enter the details of your desired network. Once manager installed, all we need to do is just add three lines of code. We create Wi-Fi manager instance and call the autoconnect function, specifying the hotspot name and password. Since I already have a saved network, I call reset settings on the first boot to demonstrate how it works. Additionally, to access the web server using a static name instead of dynamic IP address, I'll use the built-in multicast DNS library. Simply include the header file and call the begin function with your chosen domain name. In my case, the web page will be accessible at esp32demo.local. Now upload the sketch and start ESP. In network list, we need to find hotspot and access point and connect to it. In few seconds, new window on Wi-Fi manager will pop and now we can select the network for ESP. After that, make sure you switch device, in my case it's MacBook, to the same network you connect ESP. By hitting esp32demo.local, I can access the same page we accessed by IP previously. For now, we have ESP properly connected to Wi-Fi. Let's add some usability and fancy style to our web page. I want to set up simple circuit with LED and button. The LED should be toggled by pressing the button or using a switch on web page. I already covered how to use buttons in previous lesson, so I won't go over that again. But if you missed it, feel free to check it out before continue. To keep track of the LED state, let's store it in variable. To control it through the web interface, we just need to call an endpoint on our ESP32 server. Sounds simple, right? But there is one issue. Right now, our web page is just a big string inside the code. While we can build whatever we want this way, it's definitely not user-friendly. A much better approach is to have separate HTML, CSS and JavaScript files. Fortunately, solution exists. We can store these files in ESP32 flash memory. Most ESP boards have around 4 MB of flash. To manage these files easily, we'll use LightFS, a lightweight file system made for microcontrollers. Because we are using Platform.io, we don't need to install any extra libraries. We just need to enable it in platform.io.ini file by specifying the file system. After that, we include the necessary header file and init it by calling the begin function. Next, we create a data folder. Everything inside this folder will be uploaded to ESP flash memory. 
I'm adding index.html, index.css and main.js files. Since this is not a web development tutorial, I'll skip the HTML and CSS part and just focus on JavaScript. If you're interested, I leave a link in description with full code example. In the JavaScript file, we simply track the checkbox state and whenever it changes, we send a request to server with the updated value. On ESP32 side, I modified endpoints to third files from flash memory. Finally, I add a post endpoint to update the LED state when needed. And before we upload everything, I want to show you how to turn this web page into a progressive web application. You need to add following tags. However, if you want to unlock the full potential of PWA, you need to surf a manifest and create a service worker. But that's a bit outside the scope of this video. When we work with file system, the upload process slightly different. You need to find upload file system image task and run it. If you face a new issue during this stage, try to run ESP in boot mode. You can do it by holding boot button. Then press reset button and release boot. Closing all open tasks such as monitor also could help. After uploading the code, I navigate esp32demo.local, then add it to my home screen. Now it feels just like a real mobile application. And it works exactly as expected. But remember the button we added in our circuit. Right now it's not synchronized with the web page. Even worse, if I open the page on another device, it won't sync there either. To fix this, we could repeatedly request the LED state from ESP and update switch accordingly. But there is a more elegant solution – WebSockets. Instead of constantly polling for updates, WebSockets let ESP push LED state to web page in real time, keeping everything perfectly in sync. A sync web server library that we already installed supports sockets. We just need to add one more leap, a sync TCP. Let's break out the code. First, I've created socket instance where I specified the path for client's connection. Then, I made an endpoint to handle different messages. On the client connection, I want to send current LED state. On message, which is 0 or 1 in current example, I'm updating the LED state and broadcast it to every client to synchronize different devices. Don't forget to register handler and call cleanup clients function in loop. In button handler, I've also used a broadcast to update web clients. Lastly, I've modified JavaScript file, where set up socket connection, handle message from server, and send data and switch toggled. And that's it. As you can see, after uploading new firmware, everything perfectly in sync. The example we did today is pretty simple, but it covers all major topics. You can easily extend it by setting up more socket events and building more complex web pages. And I hope this lesson was helpful. Thanks for watching.